rebel angels real? Is Satan real? Many individuals have questioned the reality of Satan. Some think Satan is just a name for some evil force in nature with no personality or individuality. Others think of Satan as just a character in tales who goes about in a red outfit, carrying a pitchfork. However, what does the scripture say? The Bible sets forth Satan as a person all through the Old Testament. We run into this evil personage in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3, 1 through 4. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. We see him afflicting Job. Job 1, 6 through 10. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. We recognize his work amongst the heathen countries as described in many of the writers of prophecy. In the New Testament, he is there again. In 19 of the 27 books that make up the portion of the Bible, and his existence is implied in other books as well. The Lord Jesus Christ often spoke of the devil, and we could ask for no better authority. As a person, you think, you feel, you act. Satan does the same. He gives every evidence of being a separate entity, as alive and as self-conscious as you are at this very minute. What are Satan's origin? It is only logical that you should ask where Satan came from. The scripture shows us that by him, Christ, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Colossians 1, 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Satan is a created being. Why would our Lord make something evil? someone who has brought such curse and destruction on mankind. No. Satan developed into what he is now, but that's not how he was in the beginning. At first, Satan was an angel of immense strength and right. He was a perfect creature called Lucifer, son of the morning, and he lived in the presence of God. Isaiah 14, 12 How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? And read what Ezekiel penned of Satan. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, and diamond. Beryl, onyx, and jasper. Sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The worksmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created. Ezekiel 28, 12-15 The Fall of Satan However, something occurred. What was it? 
to complete the above verse, till iniquity was found in you, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Verse 15b, 17a. That is your answer. Satan was not content to remain as he was. He wanted to become number one, to substitute God. This cherub who covered the throne of God, who protected God's holiness, mounted a rebellion in paradise. Can you conceive in the eye of your mind that day in heaven so many years ago when that event held? The idea, the desire, the decision came to Satan, and he said in his heart that was once pure, but now turned to wickedness. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Isaiah 14, 13, and 14. What a decisive moment. What a great misfortune. Angelic Choice Let us diverge for a moment and draw our awareness to the point that seems apparent and yet deserves a brief mention. In his original creation, we saw that Satan was perfect, as man had been in his original creation. But then, like man, Satan chose to oppose God and go his own way. The clear and logical implication is that angels, like man, have a free will. They can decide to obey or disobey God. They are not machines programmed to react in only one way. Those who have remained in heaven and God's service have decided to follow him. Those who followed Satan choose disobedience. As seen in scriptures, Satan's strategy didn't work. God knew how to deal with his revolution. These two verses recited above are preceded and supported by others that tell us what happened. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Isaiah 14, 12, and 15. Satan made five I will comments, as recorded above in Isaiah, but God made six I will statements as found in Ezekiel. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all of them that behold thee. Ezekiel 28, 16-18 God always has the definitive word. He makes the final statement. Satan's Allies Time to time we read in the news of people who have risen up to overthrow their governments. Almost always a vast conspiracy is involved. A person can't do it by himself. He needs to have help. He needs co-plotters, co-conspirators, co-revolutionaries. Does it astonish you to see, then, that when Satan was cast out of heaven, he didn't go alone? No, many of the angels followed Satan's cause. There is a suggestion of the number who did given in Revelation 12:4. We read there of a great red dragon. His tail swept a third of the stars from the sky, tossing them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman as she was about to give birth ready to devour her child as soon as he was born. So perhaps a third of all the angels God first created chose to join Satan and were swept up in God's wrath and cast out of heaven. Those fallen angels are now evil angels. Satan is their one and only leader. He is their commander-in-chief, their executive officer. Satan's Work Satan works in continual resistance to God's agenda and character. For he is the arch-enemy of God. He sets up false doctrine and religion. 
He doesn't mind, for example, that people go to church on Sundays, so long as it is a church that doesn't preach, practice, or believe the gospel. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The above verse teaches us that Satan blinds men to the truth that is Christ. As the high deceiver, Satan will misuse scripture to try to get people to do wrong things, while they believe they're doing right, as he did when he tempted the Lord Jesus. He and his allies also disguise themselves as angels of light, or righteousness, to deceive and mislead people away from God. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15 tells us, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Jesus described him as the father of lies. See John 8:44. Have you ever examined ways in which Satan may affect you? For one thing, he is the accuser of our brethren, as we see in Revelations 12:10. He reminds God when we fall in sin. But how wonderful it is that we have an answering advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 1 John 2, 1 Whenever trials and difficulties come into your life, you think about the goodness of God. Satan may be responsible for those thoughts, remember? That's how he got to Eve as seen in Genesis 3, 1-3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, He shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. Satan is the great tempter. He tempts us to lie, to mesh in immorality, to kill. Like the mentor. You may have heard the phrase, like father, like son, I'm convinced. You might say sometimes that an individual boy acts or speaks just like Mike. And sure enough, you find out that he is Mike's son. Those in the devil's camp also have a family resemblance. Jesus spoke of those who acted like their father, the devil. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. That generalization, their father, the devil, applies especially to those angelic beings who were dismissed from heaven at the same time as Satan. Like their chief, evil angels are also characters who speak, conceive, sense, and operate. The Bible calls them spirits. Matthew 8.16 says, When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick. The Bible calls us to battle against their wicked organization. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6, 12 For we wrestle not against... Those morally wicked beings are often portrayed in the Bible as unclean spirits. Matthew 10, 1 tells us Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. I'm sure even that designation fails to convey all their wickedness and depravity. We pray that God continues to guide you in this world. Help me grow in my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, you promised, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John 14, 26. We thank you for all that you have provided us. Thank you for remaining faithful to us. Thank you for the redemption you gave us to return us to fellowship. We pray for the forgiveness of every sin that we have committed. In Jesus' name, amen.